Hello, welcome to MCFC 9320 Group Podcast. And tonight, as well as our normal Muppets, uh, we have Ben <laughs> Bailey. Good evening, Ben. How are you? Hiya, lads. I'm really good. I'm really good. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. Do you, uh, do you, do you just go over, you know, what, what you're going to be doing, Ben? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I mean, it, it, it's, it all seems a bit mad, to be honest with you, even now. Um, so, I mean, the, the background to it really is in, well, I think in probably November, I felt something a bit wrong with my plums, um, is the easiest way to describe it. Um, and I was due my first, or my wife rather was due, it'd be a bit shocking if I was, but looked like I was at one point. Um, my you wife, my wife, <laughs> seems like a fit in well. Um, my wife. My wife was due in the November and I went on a work course and uh, I don't know if you can relate to this, lads, but when you work away, I don't know about you lot, but uh, I had a, I got a few beers to the hotel room and I got in the bath. Now, Remember, this is a family show, Ben. Yeah, Remember, no, no, it's no, a family no, show. I'm, keep, I'm keeping it PG. Don't worry, my friend. <laughs> However, I got, I got my couple of beers. And uh, City were actually on the box, and I downloaded it to a laptop, and I was I was all set, and I thought, oh, it's going to be a cracker. We were, it was actually the game that Liam Delap scored, if you remember, in yeah, the Carlin Cup. It was a legal. It was a legal stream. It was, and I even paid for it as well. Um, and it kept breaking up every two seconds. And it's a different story that. Anyway, so I've got in the bath, I've got my beers, and um, and I, I sort of felt something that wasn't quite right. If I'm if I'm truthfully honest with you, um, and I, I panicked. Um, and I thought, oh, well, I can't do anything about this now because my wife's going to be giving birth in the next month, probably. So I sort of put it put it to the side, to be honest. I, th- I sort of thought, I'd get the baby out of the way. I know that sounds dead bad, but what I mean by that was I didn't want to cause any more stress. Yeah. Um, it's our first one. and It was stressful enough, as you can all imagine. So, um, did, so didn't your wife know at that point? You didn't, didn't you tell her until the baby was born? No, I didn't say anything, mate, to be honest with you. No, like, ju- I just kept it to myself. Um, from then, obviously, my little girl, Ida, was born um, all healthy, beautiful, and continues to be beautiful. Um, and then you sort of, I think you make excuses, to be honest with you, because that came along and then it sort of went, well, we'll get Christmas out of the way now then. And then it was get New Year out of the way. There's always a little um, milestone, isn't there? There's always something yeah. in the way, isn't there? Yeah, and I think as blokes, like you know, we're we're a bunch of blokes here, or you know, ladies here, and we like we talk about we have a good crack about stuff. And I think sometimes we sort of get caught up in that a little bit. And actually, sometimes we just need to talk about other things that are a bit more serious. And I, I'll be really honest with you, I was never that person. I'm a bit of a I, I'll be really honest. I'm a bit loose. I'm a bit of a joker. I'm a bit of a jack the lad. I like having a good time. I like having a few beers. And I don't unless I really have to. I don't really get involved in being too. Serious. I know that sounds silly, but I don't. No, no, you, you, you I think you're amongst, amongst the uh, preachers yeah, to the converted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brent, so, Brent, so what? So, was it the fear? Did you keep putting off because of the fear of what you may find out? Sorry, my sister in law just walked in. I'm just on the podcast. Oh, sorry. Then. Um, I think it's yeah, live, folks. It's live. It is. It is it's certainly. It's Hello, buddy. Charlie, give me a minute, mate. <laughs> That's my nephew, sorry. No um, worry, mate. I think inadvertently, I think it was the fear, yeah. I think there's a few there's a few facets that come into it, really, I think. Because I think there was definitely, there must have been a fear there, otherwise you'd just go and get it sorted, wouldn't you? But I think the other thing is, I thought, and I think this is the thing that I want to get across the most, almost, is I never thought it'd be me. You, mm. you know, you hear about this stuff, you never think it's going to be you, do you? No. Nope. So... So I sort of put it to one side. I'll be really honest. The other thing is, I, like for the first time since I've been about probably 18, which I'm 30 now, so I got dead fit as well. I've been running, I've been cycling. I'd, I, I, I'd worked really hard to get fit. I've lost about, um, well, nearly two stone. Uh, you know, uh, at one point I thought I saw an ab, but it turns out it wasn't. It was just a bad shadow. Um, <laughs> but, but I did get quite fit and I thought, oh, you know, I, it can't be that because I can't get this fit if, I, if it's that. And I thought, so you, you sort of put it to your mind, you, away in your mind, then you get, you're in the shower and you sort of you have a bit of a feel and you, you sort of think, ah, it's not, that's not going to be that. It's a twisted tube. It's an infection. It's this, it's that. And you look, you massively put it to the side. And I think that's what I did. I think subconsciously, I think I always knew, but I put it, I definitely put it to the side. 
And what I actually took was the God's honest truth is my little girl was five and she was about two months old at this point. And um, I jumped in the shower and um, I, I was, you know, happy as Larry as you do, <laughs> having my bit of, me, bit of me time. Sorry, the, the door keeps like it's actually, I met my mum <laughs> last night. And the, the room I'm in is like the alcohol room. Um, brilliant. <laughs> um, so I'm in like the alcohol room. So people keep coming in and getting different bottles of wine and, and all that. Um, but anyway, so I was in the sh- I was in the shower. I'm dragging this out. I'm sorry. Um, I was in the shower and I, I I went to get out. And uh, my wife came in the room. And I'll be honest with you, I thought oh, I might have half a chance here for the first time in about eight years. Um, it turns out it wasn't that. And she went, "Am I allowed to swear or not?" No. Um, she went, "Hell, your testicle is massive." Um, and you went, "Thank you very much." Well, I wish I did. I, w- I, 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 I wish it was that, but she knows what they're normally like. Um, and I sort of said, I sort of thought to myself, ah, oh, I'm in trouble here, because if she's noticed something, then that, like, it's not just me yeah. and my head making it up. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, so I sort of said, I said to her at that time, I said, ah, oh, it's funny you should say that almost. No, not turns out not to be that funny. But um, I said, ah, oh, um, I've been worrying about that, actually. And then she sort of had a prop. She had a proper look at it. I know it, it, it's, there's no way of dressing that up, really. She had a proper look at it, and she sort of said, "Oh, that does feel a bit weird." And then I said, "Right, I need to go to the doctor now because I sort of I've put it off and I put it off and I put it off, and it's it, it it's been too long, really." Um. So are you are you happy for me just to ramble? Sorry, I feel like yeah, keep going, mate. No, carry on, carry on, carry on. Ben, it's your it's your time. Bringing awareness is a, only a positive thing, pal. Thank you. Sorry, I just don't want to ramble and, and ruin, <laughs> ruin ruin the good work. No, no. Listen, um, you can't ruin our podcast. It makes a change from Andy doing it, so it's yeah. fine, don't worry. <laughs> Perfect. Well, as long as I can be of help. It's all right. Um, got John and Riz are big testicles anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. So, I mean, even then I was sort of dead nervous, to be honest, and I thought, uh, what am I going to do here? I've got to go to the doctor. And, you know, as blokes, like, who, who wants to go and have their gonads felt by somebody strange? Well, really? I mean, I'll leave that. I'll leave that one there, lads. Like some, some people nothing. might be more into it than me, but <laughs> when, it's some, when it's something like that, I was a bit like, oh, I'm gonna have to do it. So I went to the doctor anyway, and I thought oh, I'll make an appointment. And I got, I'll be really honest, I got a female doctor, and I was dead nervous. Um, and I sort of, I mean, I'm. I, I'm an extrovert, me, and I'm, I'm almost bordering on a bit arrogant sometimes. I don't mean it to be like that, but I am. And I cancelled my appointment, the first one, because it was a female doctor. I was dead scared, and I just didn't know what to expect. And it, that was the worst part. So I, I sort of said to my wife, I said, I said to my wife, I said, oh, they cancelled it. I said, oh, they've been busy or whatever. And I sort of lied a bit, to be honest with you. I put it off for about two weeks, and I went back anyway. And, uh, it's the same doctor. Um, hilariously, uh, which I did find dead funny, she was called Doctor Hands, which I thought was. So- <laughs> I just thought, I just thought you can't write this, can you? Like I've been really, I've been really, uh, really stitched up here. So <laughs> I, I she went. Could have been you know called Doctor Richard. Well, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> there is that, my friend. But I went there. Do you know what? She was absolutely mega. Like. I wouldn't say she put me at ease because I don't think she could. I don't think it was in no. her remit to put me at ease, obviously, of where I was at. And um, she, but she was dead good. She sort of said, like, you know, I've not felt anything like that. In you know, I live in a little, I live in a little town now, and she said, I've not felt anything like that. And um, you don't need I to glow now. Come on. And there's a few. There's, there's a few good jokes I could make there, but unfortunately, it wasn't the shaft. It was the ball. <laughs> um, and she and do you know what? And she said, she said, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you an urgent ultrasound, um, and we'll go from there. She said, I don't want you to panic. She don't know what it is. She said, I don't. I'm not. I don't do this enough to know if it's good, bad, nothing, infection, antibiotics, anything. So I, I sort of left, and I thought, in all honesty, I sort of thought nothing of it. I know it sounds really like blase that, but I never, I still didn't believe that it could be anything like that. Oh, I, I felt. Like- I think. I don't. I don't know about the the other guys on here, Ben, but I think that I think that's a bloke thing. Mm. You know, where you just think, yeah. ah, you know, I'm all right. This, that kind this, of- this is why this is why it's such a problem, um, because 
you know, people don't talk about it enough. And it, I don't even think it's it's not a macho thing, is it? It's not a macho no. thing, Ben. It's just it's purely it's pure, purely that you don't think it's going to happen to you, and you're scared about it, but don't like to admit it. I think it's you know, and you know, it's it's a bit of a subject we don't want to talk about. You've seen it on here now. We, you know, we are, you know, we, we're laughing about it. But maybe if we can if we can bring it out to the awareness of other people by laughing about it, absolutely, and 100%. try and take away the stigma. You know, it, I sort of like I feel wrong laughing when you're saying don't, something but don't feel wrong but, but i don't you know it's that's how blokes are aren't we you know when you it's your friend you, you do you do laugh at each other and you rip each other absolutely and, and and this is maybe how we need to kind of deal with it more is have a laugh and joke about it but it's serious um, serious stuff this i think i mean again I, i'm trying to sort of make it as quick as possible whilst giving as much information to explain no, exactly. you you carry on mate it's, um and when I do, when I do, I'll share some stories. That to be fair, as long as there's I, no pictures, mate. Don't we don't want to see no, no, pictures no. of it. You don't want to see that, mate. I can assure you. No, um, no. But I'll share some sort of stories from my friends as I was going along. And to be fair, and I'll, I'll say this openly now, I could understand how it could offend some people, but I'll share it because it's actually what worked for me. Yeah. Um, and it'll, it, I think that'll make more sense sort of when I come to it. So I won't sort of over elaborate now. So anyway, so I went for my scan. Well, actually, I didn't go for my scan. I got an email, a uh, phone call from the doctor, Dr. Hans, um, who was dead upset with me. And she sort of said, why have you not gone to hospital? You know, we said it's urgent. You've not gone. And I said, hold on a minute. You said you were sending me a referral. And it, it basically transpired that something had gone wrong between the hospital and me. And I hadn't had confirmation of when I was supposed to be there and, and so on. So I hadn't about missed right. it. I had well, I had missed it in theory, but I hadn't been told about it, so it was hard to miss it if I didn't know, sort of thing. So, oh god, it gets quite funny now. You know, do you know I've not thought about this that much since since it's all happened. So talking about actually is good to talk, mate. Isn't it? It's good to talk. Well, it's interesting. It gets, it gets a lot of things out as well. Yeah, you know, when, things happened, like, then, when, did, when, when did you get diagnosed with it? So, so this that this is the. Again, I say this, it sounds dead bad when I say it. It's the, this is sort of the funny next bit. And it, it's funny to me because that's just how I am. It might not, it's not, it's not literally funny if that makes sense. I feel like I'm justified. No, I don't need to. No, you to, don't have to, mate. We, we'll I get think, it. I think you'll get it, to be honest with you. So I went for an ultrasound. And again, you can imagine it's not the most um, exciting prospect. And I went to it. My wife, my little girl were at home. And I said, oh, I'll go to the ultrasound now. I said, I'll ring you straight away. Like, I don't know what I've done there. Um, I'll ring you straight away. Like I'm sure it's like you know it's nothing, and it, and we'll you know we crack on with our life. We go to the beach the next day. We're driving down to, all the way down to Bournemouth for a day out. It's the first time we're going to take my little girl to the beach. We're taking the dogs. Like we're dead excited. Anyway, so you do it anyway. So I thought I thought nothing of it. I was just dead excited about the next day to be honest. So I went there and um, I had this. I think they're called radiographers, aren't they? I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I should know more than do, but. You know, maybe I don't. <laughs> so you don't, you don't take it in half the time, do you? Because you just uh, you, they're telling you stuff, and you're just going, yeah, 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 oh yeah, right, yeah. But you've not took it in. You're, I think the other thing is about that. Like, you're right, but when you're going to have your balls ultrasounded, you're not. You're a bit like Jesus. I don't know how, how I feel about. Can't this. say I've ever had it. To be honest, I've, I've, without well, being too graphic, what 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 does it entail? Just because if, really... these other, if these other people listening to this that no, are scared, then I, in, you, you'll make it easier for them because I know. I mean, I just imagine them getting like a microphone and rubbing them over you. You know, like when a woman's having a baby. Yeah. Is it like yeah. that? Where they gel yeah, them up so, and then rub a microphone so, over them? So it's two things there, Paul. It's, it, the first thing you said is that you don't know anything about it. And I think that that is the best question because the one thing I've learned from this whole thing is I knew absolutely nothing. And I didn't really have any support in that sense. Like, don't get me wrong, my mum and dad, my wife, my support network has been another level of unbelievable in the NHS as well. But up until this point, I knew nothing, absolutely nothing. So, so you go basically, and it is very much like that, as you just said, it's a bit like, you know, the baby and the, the, you, your wife and you're getting um, your scan and all that. It is like that, but it's on your balls. So you're, to clarify what's just happened is my wife has just opened the door and given me the Vs, just so you know, that's the sort of level <laughs> I'm living with it. So thank you, darling. I, yeah. think that, I think that was vic victory. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure it's victory. Yeah, I don't know what was it, it is. Two, but... Was it two two sugars in your coffee? Maybe she was asking. Oh, she's getting me a coffee at this time. I'm disappointed. I have another beer though. Um, 
so 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 it is really like that, Paul. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. So they put a bit of gel on, and it's cold, and it's a bit uncomfortable, and and they scan you. They literally just scan your testicles. So I'm a. I would like to think I'm semi intelligent. So they scan my testicles. With a semi bit, please. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, pun yeah. intended. No pun intended. Oh, there'll be a few puns in a minute. You listen. <laughs> so. He scanned my testicles and he's then started asking me to move around and scan different parts of my body. So he scanned, he scanned my stomach, all up my sides, both sides. He scanned my chest. Now, I don't want to scare anybody if anybody's listening to this that ever goes through it. But I also want to be honest about what happened for me because actually, if this was me again, I'd want to, I'd sort of want to know this. I sort of worked out from what he was doing and scanning other parts of my body that he'd found something. So... I sort of quite quickly realised he was scanning other parts of my body to see if there's anything else there. So I'm not saying it's the same for everybody, uh, far from it, but also I want to be honest and just say, you know, this is about, for me, this whole thing is about awareness more than anything else. More than raising any money, it's about awareness because actually what, what I went through was tough um, and somebody else is going to do that as well. Um, so he scanned other parts of my body. I sort of got this feeling, I, I knew, I knew something wasn't right. I knew something wasn't right. Um, and he sort of, he finished up, he gave me some towels and I sort of cleaned myself up a bit and pulled my kecks up and that. Um, and he just said, oh, we'll, we'll organise an appointment for you. So I went, what do you mean you'll organise an appointment for me? I was like, you just scanned me. I said, just tell me what you found. And he went, oh, it's not my job. So obviously I'm very anxious at this point, scared and a million things were going through my head here. And, you know, I, I think the, the main one, I was dead scared. Really, really scared. They're expecting um, you to, to you, having done that, they're expecting them to go home and wait for a letter or a phone call, aren't they? He, so he told me he'd booked me an appointment for two weeks' time. So I said, right. hold on a minute, mate. I said, you want me to go away for two weeks after what we've just done? Well, that sounds dead, dead bad, doesn't it? But you want me to go away for two weeks, sit on this for two weeks and not and just get on with my life. And I went, I went, I'm really sorry, mate. I said, you're gonna have to tell me what you found. And he went, Oh, Mr. Curly, it's not my job. Um, blah, 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 blah. And I went, okay. So I'm stood at the door at this point. Now, I mean, I'm not an angry person, I'm not an aggressive person, but I'm also not a little person. Um and I, I, I stood at the door and I said, well, unfortunately, mate, we've got two choices here. So he looked at me a bit confused and I said, well, I said, well, you either tell me what's going on and I leave. Or you don't tell me what's going on. And I stand in this doorway until you do. And I said, it's up to you. Now, I wouldn't advise anybody to do that. It's not big and it's not clever, but my head had gone. No, that's the state of mind you're in, mate. I think we all understand that. Understand I'm not proud of that either, by the way. And I, I'm, I'm embarrassed that I sort of used almost my stature to put him in that situation. I do feel guilty about that. However, my head at this point was gone. That's the only well, way you, I can describe it. You're probably not the first and won't be the last to do that, though. That's the fight. That's the well, fight. That's the fight of flight mode, mate. That's that's normal. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think it was. Um, and he sort of said, he, so he basically said to me, like, I mean, he sort of said, no, I'm not telling you. I can't. Say, it's not my job. And I, I just sort of stood my ground with it, really. And it sounds really bad. I am embarrassed about it because I won't want to make anyone feel like that. To be honest, it's I'm not really I, how I, I am. I would have probably done the same, if, in all honesty, Ben. Yeah. Um, and I. He basically said, oh, I'm 99% certain it's cancer. So I said, thank you, was the first thing I said. I said, Th thank you for being honest with me. And I, I just walked out and that was it. And then I sort of got in the car. I walked to the car like nothing had happened, to be honest. Got in the car, paid the extortionate fees <laughs> um, and drove home. And I was driving home. It's about 20 minutes time. And my wife must have ran me about 15 times on the way home. And obviously I didn't answer. I just sort of thought, I can't tell her over the phone. I'm mean, going to have to speak to her. Got her home. Oof. And she's holding my little girl. And then I've got to tell her this news. Um, and I sort of, just, in all honesty, it's, it was really hard, obviously, but I sort of blurted it out because it, what, you know, what There's else? There's no way you sugar soap in that one, is he? You, you, no. You can't. No. 
Think about the bus, um, you? Yeah, that was tough. We sort of we had a cry. The, you know, truth be known, we had a little cry. I sort of said, I don't really know how to feel because I didn't know anything either at this point. I, I like, I, I don't know how old everybody is here. I'm thirty. When I was at school, yeah, we're, we're about we're about the same. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nearly 30. Riz, he's on nearly, about age, nearly there. Riz, he's on about age, not stone, mate. Oh, sorry, Ben. <laughs> but I sort of, I'd sort of got, like, when I was at school, if you got cancer, you died. That's sort of what happened. And I, I'm sure you, mm. I'm sure everybody, like, un, is the same as that. They sort yeah. of understand that when you first, start, and I sort of, my mind sort of reverted back, it sort of forgot everything else that I know about cancer. And it went back to like the first thing I probably ever knew, and it was that you died. Mm. So we had this con- me and my wife had this conversation. Said I need to speak to my mum and dad. Like I'm very fortunate. My, like I'm, I'm at my mum and dad's. I'm at my mum and dad's at the minute tonight, and we've got uh, me and my wife, my daughter, my brother, my sister in law, their three kids. Like this is a normal Sunday. Like this is what we do on a Sunday, um, unless City are on, obviously, and I'm at, I'm at the game. But this is just what we do. Um, and I sort of said, oh, I need, I'm going to have to go and speak to my mum and dad. And I said, you know, I can't ring them and tell them. I'm going to have to go and speak to them. So I, went, I drove around. They live 10 minutes away. Um, I spoke to my dad first, if I'm honest. And I sort of said, dad, like, I don't know how to tell mum. Like, mum, mum's quite hard, to be honest with you. She's a typical Mancunian mum. A bit old school, um, hard-faced. Doesn't look like she ever has a good time, but actually she's quite a loving person. Um, like Anne-Marie. Like Anne-Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> but but uh, Anne Marie, if you're like my mum, that's a great compliment. I can assure you. <laughs> Same. Um, Take it as one. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, but I came round anyway. I said to my dad, "I said, Dad, this is what's happened." Um, and he he sort of didn't. He went white, to be honest with you. And again, my dad's a bit of a jack the lad. You know, he he was he was a p- professional footballer himself. He's lived in changing rooms and all he, dad's banter, you know, he has a laugh at me, he takes a piss out of me and that's our relationship. We go to city and have a few beers, that's our relationship. Um, he sort of didn't know what to say and then I, I sat mum down and told her and I sort of said, look, this is what they've said. And to be honest with you, I still had two weeks to go from then. It was horrible telling them. Um, I had two weeks to go from then um, and I had to wait. I had to wait and I, I'll be really honest, I did loads of research. So when I say I did loads of research, I didn't, Google it and be like, oh, reading some random stuff on Google. You're going to die. <laughs> that, time, yeah, that type of stuff. Oh, it's, the, it's the worst thing you can do, isn't it? Like, yeah. You, know, yeah. You, you ain't going to get anything positive out of that, really. You're going to get a bit of an inkling, but it's it's not really what you want to be doing. Just the scary stuff. Yeah. Um, but I went on Macmillan. I went on cancer research. And I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't really think there was a lot I didn't know before I went into my consultation in the two weeks. Um, I think what's really important to share in that, though, is that I was, I feel like I was quite lucky, really, in a lot of ways, in the, in, in the personality trait that I have, being an extrovert, and my way was making jokes, my way was having a laugh, and, you know, all of these things, and I did do that, and I'll elaborate on it a bit more in a minute, because even though I did do that, at this point, I was still, I was still teetering, I was never close between laughing and crying, to be honest with you, because my head, in my head, I was going to die. I know that sounds really like horrible to say, um, but I thought I was going to die. Um, that's the reality yeah. of it, though, isn't it? That's that's the reality of what 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 could be coming. Yeah, um, and often it's really interesting what people say to me is, or even even then, what they said to me when they found out. People would say to me, "Went oh, but you have got your little girl. You know that must be she must be such a positive." Now she was when I got diagnosed, she was two months old. Now. I mean, our, my little girl is my absolute life and I love her to death, obviously. But, I, and I say this really openly and honestly, that she was the best thing, but she was also the worst. Get that because too. the only thing I couldn't talk <clears throat> about with her, I could talk about having cancer. Even before my, this is before my appointment, I could talk about having cancer. I could tell people, I could you know, I have conversations about what it might look like. You know, I had conversations about chemotherapy, about operation. And I knew at this point, I knew, I didn't know whether I need chemo. I didn't know if I need operate. I didn't know anything really. I'd sort of done a little bit of research and I thought they were going to operate and take my testicle away. And then I thought after that, it's a bit of an open field. The only thing I couldn't talk about was, was Ida. Um, and anybody, any, like, you know, a lot of my friends, I'm quite an open person. And I think that it's 
hopefully that's showing now by how I'm willing to talk about it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, even my closest friends would, would ask me about Ida. Even if it was nothing to do with the cancer, they'd ask me about Ida and I, I, I couldn't talk. My, my voice would go, my eyes would well up and I just had nothing. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if you've noticed by me rambling on, I'm good at talking. Um, <laughs> no, no. But I had nothing. I just had nothing. I just cried. Um, and it, she was the only thing I couldn't talk about. And it, it was one of them. She was the best thing and the worst thing. Yeah, we, went to the, we went to the beach that next day. And it, I, I, I think I feel forever guilty about it because it was like I wasn't there really. Like the photo, I'm, I'm vacant. I'm not, I'm there, but I'm not. Um, and that was like what it was like for two weeks, to be honest with you. Um, by the time we got there, I sort of accepted that I knew they were going to take my testicle away. I sort of knew that because I'd done that much research. They sort of said, I went in, they went, we're going to take your testicle away. After that, you sort of, cause, so with testicular cancer, again, I, I don't want to bore anyone, or but well, basically any other cancer or most types of cancer, they do a biopsy, if everybody knows what that is, where they sort of take a sample yeah. out of it. They test it and they go, right, it's this type of cancer, it's that type of cancer, it's not cancer, it's with a testic testicular cancer they don't do that they just take your testicle because they if they make it bleed it can cause it to spread quicker so i sort of knew they were going to do that so i went in got told i having my operation and to be fair they said the operation i got a cancellation date within about four days or something like that so bearing in mind i've been training really hard lost all this weight felt absolutely unbelievable in myself probably for the first time in 15 years I felt really good in myself I was going to say that does it does it as I say I don't know a great a, a massive amount about it but does it affect how you feel or is it is it meant to affect how you feel apart from obviously you felt there was obviously something wrong there physically yeah. did you feel okay in yourself looking back on it now uh, mate I tell you what I'd lost two and a half stone nearly had abs <laughs> I say that loosely but I felt unbelievable I was the fittest I've ever been in my probably in my life. Even when I was playing a good level of football, I was the fittest I've been in forever. I felt immaculate. The day, two days before my operation, I cycled 120 kilometers in my best ever time and I felt mega. Um, and this is when I knew I had it. And I still, you know, I still went out and did my bits and enjoyed myself and tried to do the fitness stuff. How did you fit it in the cycling shorts, if you don't mind me asking? Do you know what? It's, it's, it's a <laughs> no, but, do you know what, Paul? You laugh. You, 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 you laugh. Me, mate. Yeah. No, you, you laugh, but this is one of the things. It didn't fit in my cycling shorts. Yeah. I, I was extremely lopsided. It felt uncomfortable. And that is something I, I knew then. I'd had that lopsidedness for about a year. Done nothing about it? No, because I didn't think it was that. Yeah. I just didn't when, think there was an issue. You probably you, when you're, plenty down. of chaffing cream. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Sorry? I mean, plenty of chaffing cream. Oh, plenty of that, my friend. I mean, the thing is, though, is, 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 and this is the, the thing is that, you know, we, we, we are laughing about it, and it's great that I can laugh along with you, mate. Um, yeah. But I'd be terrified. It's, 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 it's a terrifying thing, and a lot of the, the I mean, I, I laugh, I laugh when I'm nervous. You know, yeah, and I, I'll. And I laugh when I'm scared and Me I too. talk a lot when I'm nervous and things like that. And I laugh about things when, you know, when I'm at a funeral, I've, I've ended up laughing at funerals and stuff. And it's not because I'm being disrespectful. It's the people I know at the funeral yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And this is, this is how we've got to overcome this, this serious thing. If we can get over it, even with laughter, we can laugh about it now because you've survived it and brilliant. But if we, we you know, if we, if you could have, if you could have come on our podcast sort of two months after you thought you'd got something, you don't, um, you, you know, if you'd have opened up and maybe said something, you, you, you'd have gone and had it done before. And I think the thing is, is so is, as the story progresses, Paul, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. So when my operation, I, it, this sounds, this sounds dead blase, right? And it's not because it was a big deal. And it, you know, the operation was the easy, the easiest part of the whole thing because it's physical. You know, they go yeah, in. Yeah. up there where you was trying to tackle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tackle's Sorry, a good pardon, question, yeah. Pardon the pun. No, that's a great pun. I love it. I love it. I don't know if you meant it, but I laughed straight away. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He, he has to think. Ben. No, don't, don't. We've oh, normal tumble, we normally have tumbleweed on here, Ben, with uh, this Abzi's joke, so. 
Well, I'm, I'm hoping that I might get on, invited on again and I'll, I'll, I might get to know you all a bit better. But it was, I thought it was all right then, I'll go with. Yeah, all right, um, I'll do. But, so I got cut open, they took it out, they cleaned one side of my um, sexual organs out. So it's not just your testicle, they clean your all insides out on that side, your reprodu reproductive organ. Did you ask if um, you could keep it? No, I didn't know, but I did get a new one. Yeah, they put a metal one in, don't they? My mate, a mate, a mate of mine's had it in the... So I've got a silicon one. So Brilliant. it might have been upgraded then. Otherwise, I'd be a bit lopsided. <laughs> yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd be falling over all the time. Your mate would um, like the French bulls. Exactly, exactly that, yeah. <laughs> Can't get near magnets. So I'd get, imagine going off in the airport and trying to tell him why. Explaining that in, in, in Egyptian or something. So Bad enough when Paul goes through with his... Uh, Titanium hip. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be, it would be exactly like that, but it'd be a yeah. bit worse. <laughs> so you'd, I did the operation. I'll be honest with you, the operation, it, it was uncomfortable, as you can imagine. I was a bit sore for about four weeks. After four weeks, I was all right. It, you know, it, it was so worse. And then I got, I basically got told um, that, so they do the biopsy when they take it out. So it takes that long. You do your CT scans and all that. And you've done all that. And then you're you're waiting basically, um, and I sort of waited. And I said to my wife, and they well they sorry they said to me and my wife they said, what will happen is, if you hear from it's called the Churchill Oxford Churchill Hospital in Oxford, if you hear from them, then you're probably going to need further treatment. If you hear from us, you probably won't. So I got a text on my phone and it was a text. It was a letter from the NHS that I wasn't actually supposed to get. And it basically was from Milton Keynes to Oxford confirming that I needed further treatment and I wasn't supposed to get that. So I read that and then I went into a bit of a meltdown again, to be honest with you, because in my head, I knew that meant I needed further treatment. I knew I needed chemotherapy. I knew I needed radiation or whatever it might be. I didn't really know which one. Or Does that mean it, that's basically it's, it's spread as it? Is that what the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so mine had spread into my lymph nodes at the back of my stomach, which is called my para-aortic lymph node. So I was sort of bordering on stage two and three. So it sort of gone quite... It's gone enough. <laughs> you wouldn't want it to go much. Just, is, is it? Sorry, just explain the stage two and three for anyone listening that don't know what that is. No, that's that, again, to be fair, is a question I wouldn't have thought about. Yeah, it's a good question. So the basically stage one is it's in one place, i.e. it'd be in my testicle. Stage two is it's gone one stage above that in terms of it's gone no further than your stomach, basically. Stage three would be lungs and brain. Right. There's only three stages to testicular cancer. So it's sort of like ball, stomach, lungs, brain. So yeah. lung, if it's in your lungs, then you're still stage three, whereas brain it wouldn't necessarily mean stage four. And if there isn't a stage four, it'd be stage three yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. So I was sort of bordering <laughs> on, teetering, teetering on the edge, if you like. Um, so I sort of thought, well, again, I can't swear, can I? Uh, I thought, oh, no. <laughs> um and I, I panicked again. I just didn't know what to expect. I sort of thought, right, okay, well, it is what it is. We'll deal with it. Um, and I tried to be just pragmatic at this point. I'd, I've ex I'd accepted a lot of the issues, to be honest with you. I'd accepted that I might need it. I'd accepted that it's going to be a bit rubbish, um, like, you know, that I was going to be off work, that I was going to do all these. And I, I sort of got my, myself in a headspace where I thought, right, I know what I need to do. I'm going to have to do it. It's all physical. I'm going to do it. And I what say, was you doing well, for a living, uh, Ben? What 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 was your job at the time? Uh, so I'm a social worker. I, I right. basically work in a children's home um, as a manager, and I it's basically a home that we specialise in sexual exploitation and drug exploitation and supporting young people who have been subjected to those things. So quite a high, um, um, well, a highly emotive job, um, and a job that takes up a lot of time. Mm. So and I and I absolutely love it. Um, and one of the biggest things to me was not but being able to. Be he's fine. He's fine. I, I asked that question because he's finding room in your head to, Sorry, to, to no. he's finding room in your head to deal with what you've got and what you're doing every day for work. I mean, it can't that can't be easy. Yeah, uh, but it was almost like the outlet. Mm. I know that's how it might not make. It's hard to make it make sense, but I think it was almost like the outlet. 
So I went to the appointment and they sort of said, right, you're going to need X amount of chemotherapy. And I sort of thought, Jesus, right. And I, I'd never felt poorly during this time. I know it sounds really bad. Never felt poorly. I didn't feel, I felt sore from the operation. Never felt poorly. Um, and I sort of did what I did. And it, I sort of crapped on, had the operation. I felt all right. And then I was really worried about chemo because I thought this is the first time I'm going to look and feel poorly. Yeah. Morely, more for my which, which one's the my chemo, wife. Ben? Is Ben is that the one in, that goes in a drip? Yeah, yeah. so it goes in, uh, goes yes. in your hand. Drip. Yeah, it goes in your hand. Um, and I, I was just worried because I think when you see chemo, especially on the TV, that was my only real knowledge of chemo. People are dead poorly, don't they? You know, yeah. they look, yeah. they're on the, at the end. And my candy, I my just, candy looks. Yeah, <laughs> you're not right. <laughs> did, did you end? <laughs> Did, see, that's the you, sort of banter you, you need, you see. Did, did you end up with air like me and Riz? Yeah. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what's dead funny about that? So, before, <laughs> before, I, um, before I sort of knew where I was at with the chemo and the type of drug I was going to have, one of my friends actually sent me head scarves in the post. Wow. And, he, and I, I just thought, fair play, mate. That, it, made me, it made me proper laugh. And I yeah. thought it was ballsy. <laughs> Excuse the pun. Um, but it was dead funny because you know yeah. you, got, you sort of have to get that. Mate, that's what you, you need, though, isn't it? Mates can, mates can do that, though, can't they? Mate, mates can do that. Well, he knew me well. He knew me well enough to know where I was at with yeah. it and whether I'd find it funny or not. And, and I yeah. and I did. And that's what I said when I said earlier. I'll elaborate on that a bit more later. That's the sort of mate that I've got, and it was you've got, very you've much. You've got to take that off to him, haven't you? Oh, he's he's, he's brave to do it. Because it could have gone two ways, but I thought it was yeah. No, he's a mate. He's a mate who knows you, innit? Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. So, so with with what you're doing now, Ben, you you, you're going on a a charity cycle ride, are you? Tell us a bit about that. So, got all the chemo done, which was crap. No dressing that up. Um, in between that, when I had the chemo, I went through a bit of a stage mentally where I wasn't me. I was dealing with things in a way that. I don't deal with things. Um, I was, I think I touched on this with you, Paul, didn't I? On our phone call, I, I reacted differently to things that I wouldn't normally react to. I.e., I had an altercation with my brother where I sort of pinned him up, which I've never done. I'm not an angry person. I'm not an aggressive person. I flipped the um, table at my parents' house in the kitchen again. It's embarrassing to be honest to talk about it, admit it, but. I need to because yeah, but it's, it's reality, mate, isn't it? Well, it's gonna get it's gonna get to it's gonna make sense, hopefully, of of the next bit, which was the question. I got support from Maggie Centre, which is very kindly up on the uh it is flying across the border there. Um, and what they did for me, what Maggie well, what Maggie Centre do is they basically offer support to families and thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've just been delivered a beer. Um <laughs> where's us? Oh my god, you should sit honestly. <laughs> oh my god, I'm honestly I won't share what's going on here, but they all think they're dead funny. Um so what Maggie's this the worst part of the comments is a serious bit this. So what, what Maggie's <laughs> did for me and what they do for other people is they basically offer emotional support to families and people going through cancer. Um about the mental battle that comes with it, which is the biggest thing about cancer, is it's, it's the, the physical stuff actually in a, in, in a roundabout way is easy. Um, the hardest part I found was the, the mental side. Um, and what they do is they really support people uh, and families. It's not just me, you know, they support my wife, they support my mum and my dad. But particularly to me, what they made me realise is that the behaviour that I sort of exhibited, which I'm embarrassed about, that I shared with you guys and, and to whoever is listening, what they made me do is they made me realise that actually that wasn't, that was coming from a place where I haven't got my usual outlets. My usual outlets were going to City. It, well, I know we're in, we were in COVID, but it was going to City. It was talking to my mates about City. It was going running. It was going cycling. It was going to the gym. It was all these things that I wasn't able to do. And it sort of just built up in me. And I didn't have anywhere to get rid of it almost. Yeah. Um, and that's not making an excuse, by the way, for how I behave. Because no. that, was on me. that ultimately, we, got, we can't get away from the fact that was on me. Ben, Ben, um, like, like you say about COVID, uh, t- take away the, the stuff, what you've actually gone through. Um, COVID has affected a lot of people, a lot of people up there who's, who 
got nothing got nothing up with them. So added yeah with what you're going through as well. I'd say I'd say it's more than you know more than well what what's the word? It's more understandable with your yeah like your rebelling and and taking that on board as well as you know going through you know the COVID uh, pandemic. Yeah, um, and I think that it's important to, to sort of have all that information to go, yeah, but also I think that I'd be, it's hard to say that I can't take my responsibility for that part as well, regardless of all of that. I do think it's important, as you say, but actually, you know, I I needed to take control. I needed to do something about where I was at, and that's where Maggie's came in, and they were honestly, as a bloke, again, I can only speak for myself, um, and I think this is something that in where we're at now is we're all getting better at talking, hence why we're doing what we're doing tonight and why you guys have generously had, have, had me on. But actually, we're getting better at opening up. We're getting better at talking. We're getting better at saying something's wrong. Um, and we're not judging people when they do do that as much. The, the, the thing is, it doesn't matter how, how the message gets out. You know, we all deal with stuff in different ways. It's like I think I can vouch for us all on here that, you know, we, we laugh about stuff and, and that's our way of getting over stuff. You know, uh, me, me, me and John, have, you know, when we're having some of our away trips and stuff, we have, you know, we have good chats, don't we, John? You know, we we, we we have good chats about stuff and, you know, and, and a good mate can tell when... Arrive, don't we? Yeah, but a good, and it's good, it's good. Now, whether you deal with that in, in a, a comical way, you know, it's a serious thing, but if you can, whatever way, it doesn't matter how you deal with it, as long as you deal with it and you talk about it and get it out, and absolutely. by people think, like absolutely. by people like you, Ben, coming on here, you know that that bit about you you being upset, flipping tables, and and, and the you know that guy in that ra- that radiographer, he'll have seen oh, that him, many yeah. many many times. You know, you feel bad about it, and you know he'll have seen that many times. Yeah. I- and I think you're right that what you're saying is that you go on your trips and you, you speak to the other lads and you have a laugh, and you, but then you talk about the serious stuff as well. And yeah. I think that yeah, but then rip they're, each they're, other, innit? You know, that, it's serious, that's how, but that's you rip you know each other, and that's mates. how we deal, yeah. But that's True. how you know you're real mates as well. Yeah. Like, you know, I've had, I have mates that have taken the mick out of me, something rotten about different things, whether it's a headscarf or whether it's having one ball now or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But actually, if I ever ring them up and say, oh, I'm really struggling today. Hey, mate, you only need one ball to score. Yeah. <laughs> Raheem Sterling needs more than one John I'll just remind you he does you. at the minute doesn't he, <laughs> he minute. so but yeah so so how we sort of got to the last bit sorry I sort of digressed a little bit but I, it's just because I want to share and make try well hopefully try and make people who are listening to understand a little bit where where I've been and and what it's been like the the, the last bit is about this cycle ride that I'm doing um and I know, Paul, we, we've chatted and we had a really good chat about it and you sort of yeah. got on board and understood it. Yeah. The, the, the cycle, it, sound, it sounds really silly, right? I'm asking people to put their hands in their pockets and, and to sponsor me. And whether you know me or whether you don't, it's not, it's not really important. And I think the bit that I want to get across the most is I'm the face of it because I'm doing it. It isn't about me. Um, and I really mean that. And that, that's not me being, I told you earlier, I'm arrogant. So it's not, it's not me being humble and sort of trying to, you know, put a brave face on or, or try and hide away from it. It's not about that at all. What, what it's about is helping other people that are going to go through what I've been through, um, have more knowledge, have better support um, and have a better understanding. And I think that, that, that they're the things that I wish I had more of when I, I sort of found out. Yeah. Um, and Maggie's sort of gave that to me. I mean, it admittedly, as I say, it wasn't, it was only when I went to them, they did, but anybody that's going through cancer or is worried about cancer or has a loved one going through cancer or anything like that. My greatest advice, honestly, and I hand on my heart to say this, I'm not just doing this. I'm, I'm not cycling 170 miles, 75 miles. So I think it's going to be a good crack. I'm doing it. It, it, be will, it will be, if you don't have the right uh, pseudocreme on me. Oh, definitely. You'll have it. Yeah. It'll yeah. be one crack, never mind a good it one. It will. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm, do, I'm doing it because I want to raise money to support other people. Um, Mag- Maggie's is, is, is not government funded, is it? No. Um, it's never. totally, so, it's, it's a total yeah. charity, isn't it? It's... So I think, I think the fact, the stat that they've got at the minute is it's 10 grand a week. It basically funds them. Mm. So obviously that's 520 grand a year. It's a lot of pennies, isn't it? 
Uh, there's a few centres in there. I know there's one in Oldham. Yeah, there's one um, in Oldham, yeah. That's the yeah. nearest one to Manchester, I think. Yeah, 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 there's yeah, one in Oldham and there's one, um, one in, there is one in Manchester in there. Oh, is there? Is it, I don't know, is there one on the Christie? I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I just... Christie. Yeah, well, I'm if, not sure. Well, if, if people just um, have a look at the, the, the link there, mag maggies.org, if you put that in Google, it'll come up with all the, you know, all the sentences. It, you know, oh, what, it's amazing, what, yeah. The, the website is the website genuinely is amazing um so what so what i've decided to do i mean is my granddad really i blame him he basically said well you know you've got through it now um and he said even when i had it even when i was going in the darkest days of it he sort of said well you've got to do something afterwards he said you can't just have this and then carry on like nothing's happened again old school mancunian bloke my granddad it's a life changer isn't it yeah oh without a doubt um and he said, well, you got to do something. And I sort of said, well, I, I don't really do things by our lads, to be honest with you. I thought, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to go go silly. Um, so I sort of thought, what can I do? And my, you know, other than my family, my love is obviously, hence why I'm on here is City. Um, has been since, since 96, when I had my first season ticket, all the way up until now. Um, even moving down here, every home and away. I'm, well, I say every away, most away is a go. Home games, I don't miss many. Um, hey, don't... don't... 1996. Riz has only been a City fan since uh, 2008, so don't worry. I was, I, I, I was actually too young to go to. My dad won't let me go to the games in '96, so I wasn't old enough. <laughs> really? Well, in that, in, you know, in that time, I've seen some bad days. You know, I went to Stoke, and I went. You know, I've had some horrendous day. I didn't do York away. I, I was one. I'm probably. Out of the 86,000 City fans that went to York away, I wasn't there. I wouldn't get that one. <laughs> Listen, for um, any City fans listening, any young City fans listening, this man's been you. through testic testicular cancer and he's not mentioned that in his worst days. He's, he's no. mentioned that. So that's how bad it was being a City fan <laughs> that, in the early days. That was nothing. Absolutely yeah, absolute, nothing. No, testicular, quote him. Ben Curley said, <laughs> testicular cancer was nothing close to what I used to watch. Oh, God, I hope that doesn't get, get back to the club, that one. Oh, I will. they really listen. got to have goals to support this club. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why I'm doing it. And as, what's, what's sort of come out of that is, I mean, it, it still feels unbelievable to me, to be honest with you, but um, who, he saved in my phone as Super Kev, which to me he'll always be, and I'm sure you guys will feel the same, that Kevin Orlock is Super Kev. I thought you meant Kevin Parker then, sorry. <laughs> he's also super isn't he everyone very much so yeah um he reached out to me um and i'll be really honest with you i thought it was a load of tosh i've said this to him i sort of he said oh mate amazing what you're doing i want to be part of it and i thought you know one of your heroes messaging you saying that i thought come on mate <laughs> but like it's great but like you know i, I sort of thought is is a nice gesture to even reach out I thought, ah, you know, he's, he's not. You'd be happy with really. a retweet, wouldn't you? You'd have to be yeah, with a retweet. A hundred percent. And do you know what? He said, "Oh, can I ring you?" And I sort of said, "Well, well, yeah." I'm a bit, I'm a bit busy tonight. Can you do it another night, Kev? Well, I was actually away <laughs> to be fair on holiday, but I thought Kevin Ollock's ringing me. And I was like, I sent the wife out and the baby out, and oh, I better not say anymore. Um, but I did, <laughs> um, and I, I said, "Yeah, you can. You, of course, you can ring me." Um, I said, oh, you know, this is my number. I sent him my number. I said, oh, just, you can set it to, you know, no call or ID, so I've not got your number. Like, you know, I, I, I didn't want to be like, oh, what that guy really? And he went, he messaged me. And the first message he said to me went, don't be so stupid. We're mates now. And he rang me and I thought, this is going to be dead weird, this phone call. And I swear to God, um, and oh, God, I hope you don't listen because he's going to think I'm a right word. Oh, he's though. a friend of the show. Yeah, you know, he's going to think I'm a right weirdo. I can't speak hardly enough of him. It was like my mate ringing me. Um, and he, he, he sort of kept his word. He he keeps he, he said it a few times, you know, we're mates now. And I feel that's dead weird because it's Kevin Orlock. You know, I, what, I literally, I, I did tell him that whilst I did idolise him, Nicky Weaver was my hero. But, he was, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, he's somebody that I did look up to. I idolised him. He, he played a massive part of City's history, um, especially in my childhood. Um, and he, but I can't, I just can't speak highly enough of him, lads. He's been unbelievable. Um, the nicest guy, um, he's funny, he talks to me, he takes the mick out of me like he's one of my mates. 
he banters me about things that my mates are bantering about. I won't go into too much because it's a family show, but he does give me a bit of grief, and it, but it's quality. Um, I actually know how you feel it because he rang me up once about um, some information about his wife's saying, car, yeah. and it just like blew me. I'm like yeah. thinking it's a wind up, and it weren't. It was Kevin Harlock ringing my garage up to ask ask him about his wife's car. But he, you know, I don't. I mean, I don't think he'd mind me saying he's had his own experiences with cancer, not him in on his own, but his all, we, all, we all know someone, don't we? Yeah, and I think yeah, that, my brother's yeah, that, just gone through it. My brother in law yeah. just gone through it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, you know, we're, we're we're all close to close to cancer. You know, like like you say, we're, you know, we've got people who are our loved ones have either gone through it or you know, sadly not made it. So it's good that yeah. it's good that Ben, you you are you know a success story. You know, you yeah you're out of it the other side and and you're trying to put a little bit in, you know, to help others. When, anyway, when is let's try and, let's when's this bike? Yeah, friends. when's when's this bike ride? When's it? When's it all? So, so again, unbelievably. The not next Thursday, the Thursday after, Kev will be getting a train and staying at my house, which is, I'm sure you can imagine, is as unbelievably. You, as weird. your wife um, decorated, as she asked you to decorate, mate, she's going to be out. New carpets. Putting, no, she's going to be out. I'll be putting candles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, let, let, me, let me get this right. It's going to be you, Kev, and your missus in the same bed. <laughs> not, she's gone. She's not. She's not part of that. So let me, because you idolise him that much, Ben. Let me, let me oh. give you a scenario while your missus is there, eh? So you come, you come home and Kev's tucked up in bed with your missus. You boot him out or make him a brew. Make him a brew. <laughs> make him a brew. I'll tuck him in first. <laughs> So, so he's, he's staying at my house, not, not this Thursday, next Thursday, and then we're cycling the 29th and the 30th. So 29th, we're doing 115 miles. We're going to stay in Stoke-on-Trent, which is brave by anybody's standards, but I beat cancer, so Stoke-on-Trent should be too bad. Be nothing, mate. It, it'd be easy, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and then the next day, we're cycling to the Etihad, um, and we're meeting, and it's also worth shouting out. Again, I don't know I don't know whether they listen, but Natalie Pike at City, who does Friend City Square. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. She, Friend of again, now. she's been unbelievable. Um, she actually does, she works for the Christie, though. I, I know she, yeah, she, she used does, to. Well, she did, she, yeah. yeah, I don't know if she used still to. does. Used to. She's, yeah. been, she's been unbelievable. She's, you know, set me up with the producer in, at the City Square, and we're going to do a little, it's going to be five minutes, which, you know, is all they do for anyone, and you're going to say, why have you done it? What have you done? A bit like we've done today, but hopefully I won't drag it out as much so I don't bore <laughs> it. Um, and then, you know, we're going to share our story, hopefully raise a few more quid at the ground. And I hope, I mean, i am be honest with you, at this point, after doing 170 odd miles, someone's going to have to buy me a beer at City Square because I'm going to be gasping. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure we can make that happen, Ben. Um, ben, Ben, do you remember, sure. do you remember um, a charity ride from the Etihad to Brighton? I don't know. That's yeah, quite I was in, I was involved in that. He's, oh, that's right. he, he's recycling that story out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it's was not about the two and a, two It's and not about days. you this, John. John, it's not about you this. From this the is Etihad about this to, is about me. Brighton. John, John we've, that as well. John, we've heard this one. Yeah. yeah. He's gone. Some more we go. Oh but lads. I'll, all I'm saying is I know how sore you'll be afterwards. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. I did. I went out um, on Saturday and I did sixty miles. And Jesus, yeah. it was yeah. So you know, I'm doing double that the first day. So it's gonna yeah. be tough, isn't it? But there's no point we doing did, something. We did ninety six on the first day when oh, that was bad enough. My dog's blacker than yours, Ben. Ben, so how's it? How's it working? What? What? What's the crack? Have you? Have you got like? No is it just the two of you? Have you got a backup team with you? How, how's so, it working? So I've got one of my other mates that I do a lot of cycling with, his Comet. Well, I say do a lot. I've done a bit with Lewis. He's doing it with us. He's been unbelievable. I sort of rang him. He sort, he sort of, he's had this rule from whenever we've gone out that he won't do more than 50 miles, ever. Does he, do know, does he know how far you're going, have you told him? Well, I rang him and I said, I said, oh, Lou, I said, um, I've, I've sort of signed up to this charity cycle and I've sort of, you know, spoke to City and he, it, ironically, he's a red as well, which I find hilarious. I'm definitely, I'm a hundred percent out in him. What you need to do is well. instead, instead of having Sudacrem on his cycling shorts, fiery Tiger Jack. Bomb. Yeah, Tiger um, Bomb, fiery Jack, right, just on the um, just on the rim of his, his shorts. 
I can assure you, Tabasco I'm going to have Tabasco sauce. Rub Tabasco sauce on it. On the uh, at City Square, I can assure you, lads, I'm going to out him in front of everyone. So don't oh, worry about brilliant. that. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah, we'll bring the tomatoes but, to throw at him, don't yeah. we? Yeah, but I, I said so to we're, him, So we're, ex- we're expecting he's behind being like a Japanese flag, are we? He'd be off at the boom, <laughs> mate. But I, I sort of rang him up and I said, oh, Luke, you, like, you know, do you fancy doing this? And he went, oh, mate, it's a long way. I went, yeah, but I did have cancer. And he went, all right, then. Can't oh, really say no now. Fair enough, then he can. <laughs> so I always got, you've always got that one, haven't no, you? I threw it in. Yeah, you can and always have went, that one. He went, I can't say no, can I? I went, not really. Well, you can, but you'd be a bit of a bit of a what's it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was it. So he's doing it with me. So it's me, Lewis, and Kev. Um, and it's I, I'd like to say I'm excited about it. Um looking forward to it in one way, in the sense that I'll probably just stare at Kev all the way and be like, I can't believe this is happening. Are you having Kev in front? Will you be I don't, know. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. He, he, to be fair, I did say to him, like, he might be better aggressively walking it, but he thinks that he's like, he's <laughs> on the bike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been one of it'll be one of them. And he, he sort of said, he said, Oh, you know, I'm gonna tell you some stories that you know I've never told anybody about my time at City. And but to be honest with you, that's gonna get me through. That's it'd be yeah, class, yeah. that's class, isn't it? Ask him the one um, about Steve Coppel. All right, got you. I'll ask him. Um, and also, it, also ask him about some of the some of his time with Mike McLean. Uh, uh, <laughs> they will get you through. Yeah, he, I won't say too much on there because people will be listening. But he, he's told me a few funny little snippets already. But he, you big surprise. Yeah. Nobody listens. Go on, say it. <laughs> <laughs> hey. We'll be glad. We'll be glad if Ofcom give us a complaint. We'll be happy with that. <laughs> Well, you imagine me saying something in the ears that he's like, oh, you can stick your cycle now. Don't worry, um, John will do it. John will stand in. He might say you can stick you know, Did you know John cycle from Brighton? <laughs> no, from Manchester to Brighton. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Have I mentioned my parachute jump? Oh, no. But no, listen. If... <laughs> Joe's aside, if anybody wants to donate, like, you know, Absolutely. I'm sure people... So where, where, do we, where do we donate if we, we want to donate to it? So there's a ju- there's a just giving page um, that you can donate direct to Maggie's, which I think is the one that's up on the thing. There's a direct just giving page that go that is like my page for doing or mine, Lou's and Kev's page for doing the cycle. Um, but any anybody wants to do it, I think we need a couple of buckets when we go to City Square as well. Yeah, um, and I promise that'll be donated. It won't be my beer money for the day. It will be donated. <laughs> hey, you deserve um, it, mate. But, you know, it's one of them things. It's something I, I need to do it as much to raise awareness and all that bit. But I also need a bit of closure from it all because it's been yeah. tough. No, and that's we, the all, truth. all we can do is a, a, applaud you, mate. Um, so Absolutely. You know, I, th- I think we should all, all try and generate some support as well to, to greet you when you get to the Etihad a week, a week on Thursday. You know, that'd, because, that'd be great. Because it'd be a massive, massive uh, achievement. And so I think... Help yourself, not just for yourself, but for, for everybody who's going through it. I think that the plan is, uh, we haven't got the exact times yet um, from the city, but I think the plan is that we'll we'll arrive at the Etihad about half one, two o'clock before the Palace game on the 30th. That's the plan. Super. Um, so that gives us a bit of time to get there. You know, we're going to want to take a few photos of like in front of the, in front of the main entrance with the bikes and that. And then I think the plan is about two o'clock we'll be on the stage and, um, and, and sharing the story with a couple of buckets. Um, and if anybody wants to buy me a beer, that would be superb. I'll buy you one for you. worry, bit. mate. I'll buy you half. So <laughs> what, what we'll do there, guys, uh, yeah, anybody who want, like uh, Ben said, anybody, you know, who's got, whether it's small change or as much as they want. If, he, if, there's, any big, if there's any businesses listening, any businesses listening that can, you know, bung a, a few quid in. I know times are hard, but listen, we've got... <laughs> If you're a bloke, you've got two balls, haven't you? And you, you know, this is this is serious. This it can happen to any of us, um, you know. So, you know, we've all got two balls. And Anne Marie hasn't. Well, have you, Anne Marie? No. no, you haven't. No, no. Anne Marie hasn't got two balls, but we have. And and I, and anyone can get it. It's as anyone. simple as that. I'm, anyone I'm really can get it. Ball for you, mate. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's one in two people now, lads. That's yeah. a mad stat. Not just testicular, obviously, and cancer in general is one in two people. That, that, well, that's a scary and Please stat. don't take this the wrong way, but because you're on the show, there's, well, there's, so, there's, two, so there's, there's, another, there's another one or two of us on here that could have it. 100%. As easy I don't as know that. Marie I don't can't think get it, but, 
you've had it, and so the, one of us is going to get it. So it we're not going to start. It no. really doesn't. No. Um, so feel your balls, lads. Please, I, I swear to God, I, I have done a few, the same, have a, please a check a few times, mate, well, since I've been on here, and that, that's just a uh, no, no joke or anything. I, 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 I've been sat throughout this with my legs crossed because anything to do with, um, you know, the uh, the Mitchell brothers down there. I'm. I don't want to. Oh, it's it's taboo, isn't it? You, you know, I've been kicked in him. I've been kicked in him, and and I don't. You look after him. So well, why that, that taboo you? you talk about, Paul, is exactly what we need to try and change, my friend. We need to get people checking the whether in fact, it's in the shower, the bath. Yeah, I think bed. John. To, over the weekend when we go to the uh, the, the the Bruges game, <laughs> I think uh, I think we're going to have a group ball squeezing session. Just to you know, we, we might video it. Just Emily to bring Cheryl. down, bring down the um, the taboo with it all. I definitely wish I was going now. Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> we'll do right, it by right. video, mate. We could we could zoom it. Right, guy. I think we'll leave part one here, and we'll uh, come back for part two, and we'll talk about uh, after the commercial. commercial. <laughs> so we're just going. We're just going to the commercial break, and we'll be right back. Thanks.